five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is the Ramble, and we go from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, here's somebody without a thing going on in her brain today, according to her. Oh, this thanks is, for telling everybody. This is Ronnie Bennett, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No relation any longer. Uh, what? Huh? Are you a relation? If we, would I consider you a relation? Well, I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's the definition of relation. We were once married and now we're not. So then when we were married, you were related to me. Well, uh, do you mean biologically? No, no never no, were. No, 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 no. But you were related to me because by marriage. Yes. Okay. The then when we got divorced, you were no longer related to me. I guess I can assume, right? You could turn that around, too. I'm trying to uh, say that so that you understand why her name is Bennett and my name is Bennett. The only thing is she legally changed her name to Bennett, and I'm still Schwarzman. Because everybody, after you and I broke up, because yeah. of the radio show, mm -hmm. everybody thought my last name was Bennett, and I got sick to death of it, so I just said, screw it, I'll keep it. Hold, hold on a second. I, uh, did you hear this? I, I got a call on my phone. Hold on a second. Let me just oh, turn. We need on. to start over. Okay. No, we don't need to start over. No, that's all right. No. We can do that. This is. These are the things that happen in life. I thought I turned everything off. Okay. The one thing I didn't <laughs> I did turn too. off See was this Picacto watch. And then, <laughs> and then it was somebody saying, "You, you know, you just qualified for." What I love is when they call me up and say, uh, "You know, we can lower your car insurance." And I go, "I haven't got a car." You know, I never had a car. You know what just happened years. to me? What? I got my new bill for Comcast, which is our one and only provider of internet and television that doesn't involve an antenna on your roof, you know. Um, they just raised my monthly charge, and I had the most basic that you can get of television. Mm -hmm. They just raised it more than 10%. Really? Again, they did it last year. You too, know, they boy. do that without even questioning. I don't think they even have to. Again? What did you just say? Without even questioning it, I don't think they even have to answer to anybody. No, they, they don't. Yeah, yeah. No, they don't. I'm, but two years in a row for a total of twenty percent, mm -hmm. nothing has changed. Um, I take the most basic television. There's uh, I have maybe thirty-five channels if you don't count. The 47 sports channels they plug in there. Mm -hmm. that I never have looked at in my life. And uh, and so now I'm up to more than 120 a month for internet and basic cable. Wow. It doesn't seem right. Well, mine's, uh, mine's at 265, but I've yeah, got everything. Well, I've got everything because Marjorie mm -hmm. has to have everything she's got to have her netflix she's got to have her hulu she's got well i have to as well okay i'll admit that <laughs> don't um, blame it on your but, wife but, that's but, not nice but, it, it, but no well, she was she has to have a lot of stuff that i could live without oh, by the way that 120 is not counting netflix i've over the holidays i found a cheap hulu fare two dollars a month for a year for what so, for hulu for hulu wow yeah yeah, and right. I wanted <laughs> what I'm paying is twenty four dollars to be able to see The Handmaid's Tale. That's the only thing I really well, want. Well, I have, I have, I pay eleven dollars a month to Hulu. Now you're going to say, what are you paying eleven dollars a month to Hulu for? And I shall answer that question. I buy their commercial free service, so I don't have to watch commercials during a show. Oh, I just tape everything, and then I can just click a button that skips the commercials. Yes, you can do that, but I I'm lazy. I'm lie. lazy. What can I say? Hey, did you watch the super-duper big deal, biggest of all time um, Jeopardy thing? No. Did they have one last night? No. 
No, it, well, it was two two nights last week and last night. No, it was three nights last week. Well, whatever number, and then it was the last one was last night. I mean, mon what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, Tuesday night. Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday night they ran one. Uh, really? Yep. I kept looking for it and I couldn't find it. Well, it was right there, 8 p.m. Really? Are you sure it's the? How how far uh, did somebody finally win it? Yes. Oh, really? So Ken Jennings won it. Yes. Oh. Son yes. of a bitch. I yeah. want I wanted the gambler from Vegas to win it because he. Oh, I I couldn't stand him. <laughs> really? But I got to tell you something. Years and years and years ago, a woman I worked with got on Jeopardy. And mm -hmm. she was forever reading, you know, those great big books they used to publish with everything that's known to the world in them every year. Yeah. And she was just reading those all the time like crazy. And she made notes of certain things in newspapers and magazines and all that. And she um, tried out. This was when I lived in New York. She tried out for the show when they announced we're interviewing New York people. Mm -hmm. And they took her. This really? was way back in the 1990s, early 1990s. And, uh, and so she was on the show, and she won, I think she was on two programs before someone else beat her, and she won 35000 and change, wow. or somewhere around there. Wow. And so I was sending her a note this morning about, did you watch the Super Duper Jeopardy? And it occurred to me that Jeopardy, for God knows how many years, you know, 35, 40 years it's been going on, mm -hmm. that Jeopardy has a standard thing that it does every day. They do it exactly the same way every day. Somebody wins, somebody loses. You can't make up facts on that show. Nobody gets into fist fights. Nothing untoward ever happens. And yet it's still compelling. Wouldn't it be nice if our life was like that these days? Yes, if it were as easy as Jeopardy. Yeah. Yes. It's a very civil... It, it's it, the one little place of sanity in public life. Well, more than that, civility. Yes. Civility, yeah. Yes. Yes. You say sanity, but I also add civility to that. It's a very... No, no, no. But I meant overall, it's this, given the, the insane governmental right. political world we live in and geopolitical world, yeah. it's this one little corner there that has certain rules, they follow the rules, and it works every and, day. And, and it's not a stupid-ass game show, either. You know, what always amazed me, the two shows that were created by the same person followed each other. It's Jeopardy, the smartest show on television, without question, mm -hmm. followed by uh, 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 Wheel of Fortune, the stupidest game show on television. <laughs> you don't have to have I a brain read. in your head to play uh, Wheel of Fortune. I didn't read the story, but I saw a headline somewhere in the last week that whoever, whatever the name of the guy is who's the host of Wheel of Fortune, I haven't seen it in Pat years. Sajak, Pat Sajak, His yeah. daughter is playing the letter turner. I think maybe she was doing it when Vanna White was hosting it because he had had a uh, medical problem. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. I, didn't, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. because then Vanna goes back to turning, turn the, turning the letters. They no turning letters. She used to have to physically turn letters. Now all she does is point to them, and they oh, light really? up. Oh, really? I didn't and, know that. And they, they light up. It? Yeah. <laughs> it was not. I like to see the letters turn. Before you know? actually, before she she turned them, as you remember, she used to turn them, and the letter would come up. Then when they got went electronic, she goes over and touches them. So they, okay. <laughs> yeah. just so they have a pretty lady walking across the stage. Yeah, That's nice, yeah, yes. yeah. And Vanna was a, it was a, an established thing. I mean, years ago, when I was doing uh, the morning show in San Francisco, and that's got to be it's in the '80s. Okay, they were guests on my show together. That's how back they far back they go with that show. Who was together? Uh, Pat, just say Jack and Vanna White. Came on oh, the show. wasn't she there from the beginning? I thought. You don't know what I'm saying is this was back in the '80s. That's how far back they go on that show. You know. Hey, I just noticed something. I don't know if it's been here before. Mm -hmm. There's a little note in the upper left corner of my screen. I got to lean in. It says, "Alex is using a device that could re record or broadcast this call." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that me that puts it there, or you? No, that's them. Who's them? Them is uh, Skypey people. Oh, okay. The Skypey people. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, that's supposed to let you know I'm recording you. Yes, I knew that up front. Oh, okay. Because I use a thing called NDI, and whenever that gets used, they, they put that up there. He may be recording you right now. I see. So how's the, how have you been for two weeks since we spoke? Well, I'm uh, I'm fine. I uh, I uh, did I did I tell you I had my uh, the spacer put in in the uh, now I guess maybe I didn't. I had this little operation out to. where they put in a spacer and they yeah they put me out for 15 minutes and uh, they put some gold posts in my prostate so now I'm worth a, at least I'm worth more than the 98 cents they say your bodily parts get you. <laughs> um, and uh, that's oh, for that's oh, wow. <laughs> That's for aiming in for the uh, radiation. Plus, this is prepping for the real thing. Yeah. Uh, so then I did that, uh, and um, that was that was that went easy enough. Except the, the 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 stuff they put in my system to put me to sleep. He said, "Well, it'll be get a little a little hot, a little hot." My mm -hmm. hand felt like it was falling off, but I passed out finally. I think that's you, not no, how hot no, no, it was. no, no, no. It was, it was, and. Uh, uh, then I, I, he said, oh, well, I'll put some numbing agent in there. Oh, well, you, now you think of it. And then uh, I uh, went to, uh, he said the last words I said was, oh, that's nice. You know, and then I was out. Okay. And they did the whole thing. And then two days later, I go in for a rehearsal for my, uh, for my radiation in which yes, they, they rehearse it. Well, they do all the things they got to do. They put them, take a CT scan of me to see where the prostate, how big it is, where they want to put the radiation. And so my doctor was there for this. Um, and uh, then they do something and, and I'm now a courant more than okay. I've ever been. Okay. Yeah. I, I now have four tattoos. Oh, real? I mean, forever? They put the, it. They put it, They put a tattoo on my be uh, upper upper belly here, lower belly. I want to know where these tattoos are. Side. Do you really want to tell me? Well, no, no. They're on either side too. They're just little dots. <laughs> little dots. That's yeah. where they're going to stick something in. No, that's where they're going to. Again, they use those as guideposts for the radiation. Okay. Yeah. They. I was because I was thinking that when they were doing something inside me, they were going in through. On one through one side. Yeah. But they didn't tattoo me. They just they just it went in. They yeah. It. Yeah. No. No. This is so that they can. It's how they position the uh, the robot arm to go in and zap me. Okay. Ain't medicine wonderful? It's. I'll tell you something. I'm look, I'm kind of looking forward to that. That's kind of sci-fi. I'm not looking as for, much forward to the seeds that he's going to implant in me about two weeks and after they that. Do that. They do that by sticking a needle in your perineum and actually going in there and depositing. Did they put you to sleep first? Oh, yeah, of course. I would. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, I, I that, hope that, so. that's the only bonus you get out of this whole thing. And they, <laughs> uh, they uh, are going to, um, you know. Uh, um, uh, so wait, wait, wait. What are the three parts of this? No, the two. Well, well the first part was a prep for the whole thing. For the, for the radiation, that was the space. The gold things in. The spacer and the gold thing. Okay, the oh. spacer is to separate your rectum from your prostate so that it doesn't get irradiated. Okay. okay. All right. Then okay. next is the uh, actual radiation, which is coming up on the 27th. That's that, what the tattoos are for. Yeah, that's five visits every other day for a week and a half. Okay. Okay, which is fine. You know, the old days you used to have to go for two months five days a week, right? Okay. And then after that, he does the seed implant, which is taking a, while I'm asleep, a needle, th put, shoving it through the perineum and then depositing these um, uh, seeds in my prostate. And uh, You know, I'm so squeamish when you say things like, oh, just stick a needle in like that. Go, ah! Is I could never be a surgeon. <laughs> I just I know, but I'm not going to have to be awake for all of this, so it doesn't matter. Stick anything you want. I don't even it. like hearing about and it. And I'm told it doesn't. You don't have any pain afterwards. So it, it, it's it, not about yeah, that. It's yeah. just you're going to do what to me? And and it's it's a uh, outpatient procedure. You're, you're, it doesn't you're, matter. It you're still in and out in a couple the same hours. Way. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm through with all my radiation and stuff. And then, as I've joked many, many times on this program, and they're probably <clears> sick of hearing the joke. I will then every time I fart, a mushroom cloud will come out of my ass. So, oh God, you always go in that direction. Yeah, I always have to take it into the dumper, you know. And how are you, my fine lady? I'm okay. Yeah, you I'm look, okay. You look great. I'd like to do a shout out. Yeah. 
to the pulmonary rehab that I go to twice a week. Oh yeah, this is your other problem. See, she's the cancer isn't the bad problem. It turns out it's. Uh... What I say about the cancer now is that if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Yeah. And uh, the the bigger problem day to day in terms of yeah. you have to deal with it is COPD because the big deal is you can't breathe. Right. And uh, so this rehab is what they do there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is teach you some new breathing techniques and you do a lot of work on treadmill. Mm -hmm. And when I first got there, I could only do five or 10 minutes on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. When I was there yesterday, I did 40 minutes, 45 wow. minutes, something wow. like that. Now, we're not talking at much of an incline. It's more, it's flat. Right, but still. And I'm not going all that fast, and I never will walk very fast anymore. But uh, it's in two months, that's a huge improvement. Then once a week, we have, oh, we, and we do sitting down, I use. I have to confess something that I'm ashamed of now, mm -hmm. is that ever in the past, whenever I saw a bunch of old people sitting in chairs doing arm exercises mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah. I thought, why bother? How much can you get done in a chair? Well, let me tell you, they can really make my muscles hurt. <laughs> and it's, I, I should never, ever have said anything like that because it's really hard work. And um, and it gets you know during my progress there it gets harder and harder, mm -hmm. and uh, and the difference it used to be that I couldn't walk from home to the trash or to the mailbox mm -hmm. without having to stop two times sometimes three to catch my breath. Mm -hmm. Now I can get there and back without doing that thanks to the rehab. Wow! And we have education classes that teach you these breathing techniques. And when to use your rescue inhaler, you know, that sometimes when you you can't get your breath. Yeah. And nutrition and just an endless number of stuff, little things that make your life easier, make your breathing easier when you have this disease. Marjorie, turns out, came up with COPD. A slight, not, when? not bad. When? Uh, recently. Recently. Uh -huh. And she went through a pulmonologist. And he said, yeah, you have COPD. You have a minor, she kind of has a minor version of it. She gets out of breath and so on. But they say, you know, you've got COPD. But, uh, and I can't remember what they said may have caused it. It was something she did years and years and years and years and years ago. You know. If you smoked that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not that concerned about causes. I mean, you could... It seems to me if you live in Australia, you're now in danger of it. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, but what I'm impressed with is these nurses. They are our ends that, um, you know, keep track of what we're doing and and keep all the notes and tell you when to, no, you can do another 10 minutes today, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And they're right and they're smart and they can explain everything and words that non-medical people can understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, it's changed my life in two months. It doesn't do anything for the pains in my hands, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that wasn't on the menu to begin with. So um, I just, I think they're terrific and they've done wonderful things for me and made my life so much better. Wow. Um, and I forgot what the question was that you asked about that, but yeah. there you go. But, but uh, anyway, so she, she has it, uh, but uh, uh, he's going to see her in about three months and maybe give her some inhalers or things like that. that she, I do that every morning yeah. and evening. But it's not like you have it, you know. Uh, well, and that's another difference. After going to this for two months in the beginning, I could only do these little intakes of breath for the inhalers, mm -hmm. and now I can do great big ones. So well, they've made a big difference in my life. What they think might have caused it is, a while back when we were living on Houston Street, the building next door to us completely caught on fire. I mean, it was a five-alarm fire, fire trucks everywhere. And we stood on the roof watching it right across from it. And it could have been, they feel, from inhaling those fumes. You know? I don't know if you could one time does that for anything, but it, there you go. She was coughing for months after that. Yeah. It was. It was. Cool. Why were you up there in the middle of the smoke? Because it was fascinating watching the firemen work. But everybody knows it's not good to be breathing in all that smoke. It's also fun watching another house burn down and 
having it not be yours. Alex, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it's like my father said about boxing. My father was, you remember my father, he was a very I, kind, gentle man, okay? He was yep. a gentle person. But he loved watching boxing. And I one time I asked him, I said, Dad, you're such a nice person and you're so, you know, you're so decent and, and so nonviolent. Why do you like watching boxing? And he says, I like to watch two guys beat the crap out of each other in a ring and be happy I'm neither of them. <laughs> that works for me <laughs> once. You know, for the Lost the entertainment value after that. Yeah. <laughs> so you said you had something for show and tell? I have something for show and tell. Here we go, ladies. And gentlemen. I love show and tell because it's always, it's always a present we, for all of us. What? Go ahead. As we know, I have many hats. Yeah. And this is a new hat yeah. that um, I saw a climate scientist wearing mm -hmm. um and so i'm gonna put it on for you make america cool again is this the coolest hat yes it's blue yeah and it says make america, america cool, cool again, again. That's it's great. a fun that's terrific isn't it terrific yes 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 i love it i love it anything to put down donald trump you know <laughs> I don't know. There's certain places I won't wear it. Really? I Why? I don't want the argument. I don't know that you'd have an argument with that. You know, it's uh, people. If anything, if you wear it, they probably they probably I, chuckle at I you. Have Trumper, and I don't want. I just am not interested in having that conversation. Come on, you live in Oregon. That's not Trump country. Excuse me. Really? You go east of the Cascades. Yeah. And are that, you planning on going yeah. east of the Cascades? Pardon me? Are you planning on going east of the Cascades? But, you know, I, I'd just rather not discuss this. Wear story. your damn hat and <laughs> wear it proudly. Oh. But and I never I don't really like how I look in this kind of a hat, but it's worth it for what yeah. it says on it. I love <laughs> what it says on it. <laughs> Well, I uh, I was going to make one that uh, if, with a picture of a block of cheese on it and go make America great again. Ah, uh, great, yeah, great yeah, the cheese, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like this. Make America cool again. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see as many people wearing this hat as wear the red hat. So what's happening? Let's just ask you quickly, since you have a blog called TimeGoesBy.net, which everybody should read because it's great that deals with aging. What's happening with all the cacas lately? Um, well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of below the radar because of everything else that's going on. A lot of below the radar news chit chat mm -hmm. that Trump is out to get social security in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely that means the people who use social security for disability, which is not necessarily related to being old. Right. You know, um, and people forget that Social Security does that too. And that's often people who can't work. And one of the ways they think he's going to go after it is make them reapply every two years, mm -hmm. which is a long, involved, awful process that gets hung up forever. Mm hmm and doesn't seem to me a reasonable thing to do. Um, Does this guy get up every morning and say, what can I do that's cruel? I think so. <laughs> I mean, really. Is there any other explanation? Yeah, I mean, you know, you lay, wait a minute, let's take health care away from old people. And by the way, what can we do to children? You know? Yeah. Yes. And the children thing really breaks your heart, the, the border children. It's just so oh, awful. Wait, that, and some of those families, because they didn't keep records of where they shipped off the children around the United States, mm -hmm. some of those families will never be reunited ever. Right. Right. And now they are finding new ways to turn away asylum seekers and refugees that's not people that just think, oh, I could make a better living in America, which, you know, I disapprove of what he's doing with that, too. But but this is if you're you're 
escaping a country where everybody's shooting each other all the time mm -hmm. or there's no more food. And it's going to get worse with climate change. There are going to be more climate refugees. And so the northern hemisphere is going to be getting a lot of those. And here we are, instead of talking about how to help these people and get them here and take care of, of them and get them on their feet again, we're talking about not allowing them in, even to apply for asylum or refugee status. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't even know how to think about that without getting teary. I know, I know. Well, um, anyway. And uh, so for old people, you know, the other things that are being bandied about are raising the age for eligibility for Social Security past 67. It has... A, 20 years ago they or so, they raised it from 65 to 67, but very slowly over many years. And it's not even reached entirely 67 yet, and already mm -hmm. they're talking about more. And I don't know the statistics well enough to think about that rationally. Yeah. Not, uh, rationally, I can, but I, I can't make a decision about it because I don't know what the statistics are. They say that people um, are healthier longer and don't need it. But... And, and that there's full, un, full un, un, you know what I mean, the reverse of that, full employment. Well, not for old people. <laughs> After 50 and sometimes even 40, you don't get hired. No, that's, that's right. It's absolutely right. We should be starting, uh, pardon me, folks, for saying this, we should start giving Social Security at 50. We really should. I well, mean, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I mean, come on. How's a, how does a person, unless he's very lucky, earn a living after 55? I was very lucky. I kept working till I was 74. Okay? That, that's, that's pushing it. That's getting pretty lucky. 63 for me, and I, could, I, I beat my head against the wall for a year and couldn't. You, you know, I was working then in, in, in the Internet. Right. And... Um, I didn't want it to be about ageism, but I realized that the very, very few two or three interviews that I got in person, I usually, I could get a phone interview, but not in person, they were all 20-somethings. You had a very impressive, what they call CV, you know, you had a very impressive resume of working with Some Barbara Walters. Lots of people that can't get hired yeah, at that right. age. But what I'm saying is, it was your age, it wasn't, it wasn't your skill set. Well, you know, here's the one that got me that I knew it was over, forget it, figure out how to mm -hmm. live without a regular income. Yeah. Is I was had had a successful phone interview. They asked me to come in. This was at four or five in the afternoon. They asked me if I could come in to meet some more people the next morning at 10 a.m. And so I, you know, I got myself all shiny and neat and clean. And I went up there and I'm waiting in the waiting room. And at one point, a door opens, and a head of a 20-something looks out and looks right at me and closes the door. And I wait for another 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. <clears throat> then the guy who had stuck his head through the door came out and came over to me, and he said, I must apologize to you. I am so sorry. We filled the job after we talked to you yesterday. He talked to me at 5 o'clock. I don't believe he filled the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems to me if you're going to die, going to, going to lie, that you should at least make it reasonable. <laughs> you know? um, and that's when I knew that it was, I couldn't work that hard. I, I could work really hard at a job, but I couldn't work hard at that anymore. Yeah, getting one. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I was worn yeah. out. As, yeah. It was just exhausting. No, well, I was talking and, to somebody today about the fact that I think my last job, I was let go. There was the age factor. I always felt that. And the thing that always galled me, and I told, this was, I was talking to Larry Bubbles Brown, um, a comedian who I do one of these interviews with on occasion. Um, I, I said to him that when I was being let go, they said, uh, by the way, you know, you have severance. You have 16 weeks of severance. Big deal. Company like series, 16 weeks of severance. Hmm. Anyway, um, uh, but before you can get your severance, you have to sign this uh, agreement that you won't sue us for age discrimination. This is a very important point that you're making. Yeah. 
Um, and and let me explain well, a little. Can first. I just finish the story for a second? Right, I, and then I, I said, no, no, no. no. Then funny. I said to them, "Well, you realize that asking me to do this is age discrimination, because they weren't asking it of my producer, who was younger than I was." Mm-hmm. You know. Anyway, as you were saying, um, I forgot. You know, I get it's just. You were saying something I should have said, or something oh, that. Oh yeah. no no. It was about um, oh I'm sorry. This, I, is, I, this is what happens to two old people. Finish what I'm saying ever. I never find it again, and so yeah, yeah. I lost. But it. but you un- you understand what they were putting me through there? It was obviously age oh, discrimination. Yeah. What is that? There are laws against age discrimination as there are against other kinds of mm-hmm. discrimination. However, and this is not delay on Trump. I mean, I I don't know what this administration has done, but other administrations before him. They keep easing the laws for the employers so that it gets harder right. and harder right. for employee, employees who have been let go to go to court if they think they have a case. And it, and it's, they just watered down the bill so that there's hardly anything. And the, and the obvious thing is, particularly a company as big as what you work for, anything more than a small little family company or something, um, is they have lawyers on staff full time, so it doesn't matter how what they've got to do in terms of legal things. They're already paying a guy to do it, whereas you or I have to go out and pay somebody eight or nine hundred or a thousand whatever a minute mm-hmm. or an hour. It seems yeah. like a minute, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, to to handle your case, so most people can't afford to do that. They're already out of work, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, and so it just gets harder and harder, and it's so what it does is make age discrimination effectively legal. Yeah, yeah. And very, very few cases are ever won by individuals. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen. And, oh, if you're going to raise, yeah. you know, if you're going to raise the retirement age, you're going to have to think about that part of it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, and how and how do we make that different? Yeah. Well, it'd be nice if they raise the 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 the. Uh, retirement age it, because people were getting hired later in life but that's not the case you actually need the money earlier but hey look i you know we i always say oh we're going to do 25 minutes and then all of a sudden i look at the clock and we've done 31 minutes <laughs> my <laughs> time flies when you're having fun you Espe- that word chatterbox especially chatterbox. when you're two old people talking about old stuff you know yeah yeah, yeah. hey listen it's nice to age with you you know? <laughs> Thank you, and you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I one day came to the realization that uh, you know the only reason I have what I have physically is because the most contributing factor is I'm 80 years old. That's also the good news. So you know you can't. Here's the thing I go through sometimes when I have a new symptom or something yeah. is going wrong that doesn't feel right. Is it cancer? Is it COPD or is it old age? I don't know. Or, surprise, <laughs> surprise, is it something new? <laughs> oh, yeah, <can't> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ronnie Bennett. She has a thing, a, a blog called timegoesby.net. you got to go to it. It's really terrific, and I love talking to you. I enjoy this, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I really enjoy my time with Ronnie. I really do. And uh, I gotta, I gotta make sure about something here. Hold on, just one, one little second here. Just want to make sure everything's okay uh, because I don't want to. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. Good. There we go. Okay, I just, I just, you know, we, I have trouble when I'm interviewing her. I have trouble with sync. Uh, she is not completely in sync, and I don't know what the problem is. It's something that has to do with Skype, and I haven't been able to figure it out. This also may have something to do with this program I'm using called the OBS. I don't know. That may be a problem, too. But anyway, um, listen, tomorrow night we're not going to be on. Um, why, Alex, you ask, are you not going to be on? Well, we're not going to be on uh, for a very simple reason. I have court on uh, Friday at 9.30. At 10 o'clock, well, I will have to be there at 9.30. And um, uh, for me to do a show tomorrow night and then uh, to stay up late and so on and so forth, 
would make it impossible for me to be fully rested for this arduous task that I have to go through. All right? So uh, we will not be on uh, tomorrow night. We will be on again Friday because I will have then had the whole day, and I can come home and I can kind of sleep. It's only a half day that we have to do uh, on that particular day. So, you know, it's not, it's not, a, big, uh, not a big problem. Uh, but um, let me see here. Are we are we still on? Oh, Jack forgot to turn off uh, Skype. Okay, all right. Anyway, so our our lines are open. So we won't be on tomorrow night, and we probably won't be on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday for exactly the same reasons. Okay, but we will be on Friday. So we will only be doing one day next week. That's the reason for uh, what was hap what's happening next week. Uh, and then from there on in, I have, uh, I, uh, starting on Monday of the following week, I have my uh, uh, radioactivity stuff, you know, uh, which is fine uh, uh, because it may not cause me any problems and we may just be able to do this thing without, uh, without recourse, okay? Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on that, though. I, I reserve the right not to do the show. I'm told that the worst side effect of the initial radiation that I'm going to do is, uh, is, is tiredness, is uh, the extreme uh, mild fatigue, they refer to it as. So if it's, uh, if it's mild fatigue, I think I can do the show because I have a case of mild fatigue all the time, and I do this show. So um, um, that will be what is happening there. Okay, so that's my uh, that that's the schedule for the rest of the, uh, uh, the at least the next week. Next week, one show next week on Friday. Okay, um, I I wish I could do it uh, every night, but what happens is I'm then through at midnight, and then I got to stick around for uh, to post Jack's show, which I won't do. I'm, I'll do it the next morning, uh, but I have to go to bed at a reasonable hour. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. But I just don't think that I can do some shows next week except for on Friday. Is anybody going to call tonight? If nobody's going to call tonight, uh, I can go. I can call this thing quits really early and uh, uh, not have to deal with it. Let me see here. Uh, are there any Are there people listening? Uh, yeah, there are people watching the video. And there are people listening to the audio. And uh, nobody's calling. Oh, yeah, uh, Phil said he wasn't going to call tonight. That's why I'm not getting a call from Phil, which is fine. You know, get along without Phil, too, unless you don't call. And if I don't get a call, it comes from calls in a couple of minutes here, I'm going. I'm calling it quits. Uh, let me see here. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, when it comes, it comes, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, hello uh, to uh, Jeff Stein. Let's see here. Jeff, I think was on. Were you on? You were on last night. Well, uh, no, I guess you I were. You, yeah, but you weren't in the. Uh, let's see here. Here, we'll put you in. Oh, wait a minute. You're not up yet. Hold on a second. But Phil was uh, was here, right? Yeah, he was in the first spot. And uh, he's not coming tonight. Yeah, I don't have. I, for some reason, cancel. Okay, cancel. Now let me, let me, um, let me see here. I don't, Stein Zeller doesn't, oh, there it is. Okay, all right, let me go back here. Ay, 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 ay. ay. Uh, no, Stein Zeller doesn't come up on that one. That's strange. Well, we'll bring it up on this one. We'll bring you up in the number two spot where I did see Stein Zeller. No, that was a lot from last night. What is the problem here? Hold on. Oh, boy. Uh, don't tell me I'm going to have problems tonight. I don't want to have problems tonight, folks. Please. <laughs> Let me see here. No, that's not what I want. I want this, and then I want Skype, and then I want preferences, and then I want, uh, uh, let's see here, calling. Calling. And uh, allow Skype to, uh, 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 advanced. Oh, that's the reason why. Okay, now we're okay. Something turned itself off. That was the problem. Okay, so uh, cancel. And then now, uh, well, wait a minute. Let me answer this one, too. This is Charlie Wallace, so I have to answer Charlie. 
There we go. Now let me go over here. Um, there we go. Now we have, uh, there we go. Charlie is signed hey. seller. Okay. And then I, for some reason, I don't know why this uh, Skype uh, turned off something. I think it probably updated itself automatically and then uh, it caused me problems. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Let me see here. There we go. All right. Now we got our people up. Now I had to go in and turn on the NDI, which is the thing that lets everybody's picture show up in, the, in there. Hi there, guys. How are you? Hello, Dale. Yeah. How are you doing, Charlie? Hello. Yeah. Did you did you watch the debate last night, Charlie? Where you weren't here last night, were you on the no, show? No, no, I didn't watch the debate. You did watch the debate? I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. Because <clears throat> I hear that. Uh, 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 what's her name? Elizabeth Warren and Bernie got into a dust up. Is that what happened? Did you mm. see it at all? Yes, I did. Jeff. Uh, you know, I think that between the two of them at the beginning, they're not trying to, they were trying not to have a, a fight. Oh, okay. Okay, but it seems like everybody keeps asking them the same questions. Yeah. Well, didn't you say that? Yeah. Or didn't you say this? Or, or, you know, don't you think that people who are women could be president mm -hmm. or shouldn't be president or couldn't? You know, it just went on and on and on, and yeah. it was kind of a waste. Yeah. By the way, look who's joined. Look who's joined us tonight. Look at that. Wow. That, that happy little yeah. face of Rob Alfano. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. I, you're fine. I got a new headset. So you got a new headset. Right. Yeah. The last time I was on, whenever that was, it kept flipping on and off, going between the mic and the headset, and the. So I got a new headset. Yeah. It doesn't have the bass response too much. It's kind of trebly. Hmm. hmm. But By that I can't control. That you can't control? It, where would you do that from? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. You sound fine. You know, we, we, we're getting you five by five or whatever. What, what's, the, what's the term? I, don't they say something like five by five in ham radio talk or something oh, like uh, that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, never did the ham radio thing. Our ham radio guy is near. Oh, Tom Yamaguchi is calling tonight as well. Wow. See, these are people who call when, when Phil is in Phil, here. here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me see here. Wait a minute. Uh, Tom Yamaguchi. There he is. Okay. Uh, hello, Tom. How are you? Fine. I hope I have a better connection tonight than uh, last time I tried to call. Yeah, no, you're fine. You sound fine. Good. You look good. You're, you're always against that wall. Where are you when you're against that wall? Are you in a, be are you in a bed or what? Oh, I, oh, I'm getting some slowdowns in my my feed or well, my. Yeah, well, don't worry about that. You look fine to us. Oh, all right. Yeah. If it, if it's slow, it's just because this show is so fucking boring, you know. <laughs> so anyway. Um, yeah, I know. I was I was saying that uh, uh, they were having this brouhaha. Supposedly, uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren and 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 Bernie. Bernie. Did you see it at all last night, Tom? Well, I listened to it. I don't have um, cable, but I did uh, listen to CNN through my Sirius XM app. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those situations where they try to provoke fights. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it makes good. TV. Who tried? Who tried to provoke here's, the? Here's who, the ironic thing. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the ironic thing. Yeah. You know they they were saying, oh, the, the the Kennedys want to talk about climate change, mm -hmm. and, and 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 whoever Blitz or whoever says, oh, we'll get to that, we'll get to that in, in a bit. But first, let's let's deal with this silliness of you know <laughs> they went they spent about 10, 20 minutes on this. Thing about whether you know Bernie said that uh, uh, women could be elected president or not, and then after that they went a bunch of other things. By the time they finally got around the climate change, it was about less than five minutes, and it was over like that. So once again, CNN did a terrible job. They were trying to gin, they were trying to gin it up. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They definitely work, but the, the replay I saw on YouTube, he, the, uh, the moderator asked Bernie, did he say it? And he said, no, definitely not. That's ridiculous. And then right the very next question, it looked like he goes to Elizabeth, she goes to Elizabeth Warren and says, uh, okay, what did you think about, how did, what did you think about when he said that? And he just denied <laughs> saying that. He didn't say, I mean, the, a moderator didn't say, well, did he say that or not? Wow. And the moderator said, well, what did you feel or what did you think about when he said it? Jeez. So they're obviously trying to gin up a fight. I mean, you know, this whole thing is turning into wrestling, you know? This is turning into the WWF. I think they should be actually broadcasting this, you know? And this isn't sport. This is, a, this is politics. This is our lives, people. And all I, these I networks think can judges. think about is the money they're going to make. Now, i got to tell you something. This is an interesting thing. I was reading just yesterday. Do you know the late night shows like Fallon and Colbert and uh, 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 Kimmel, all of whom have, have, well, Colbert has gotten some decent ratings out of going, doing politics. And Kimmel's been doing politics. And Fallon's has, has had to go to doing politics in order to compete with the rest of them. Well, they say it's been a hollow victory because now all their ratings are down because people just don't want to hear politics. They don't want to hear politics at night when they're ready to go to sleep, you know? And so this may be a harbinger for where all these news networks are going wrong. By doing this 24-7 about Trump this, Trump that, impeachment this, impeachment that, you know, yes, it's all important in perspective, okay? Mm -hmm. But not where it's a 24-7 format, and it's mm -hmm. gotten to be that way. Every time I tune in to MSNBC, there's somebody there harping about Trump. Isn't there something else happening in the world? Aren't there some starving kids in India you can talk about, you know? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't watched. What, what were you saying, Rob? I haven't watched CNN in about nine or ten months. The first time I tuned it in was uh, the New Year's uh, coverage with Anderson Cooper. Um, and I watched it. That's the last time I watched it. I just... I. I'm done with all that stuff. I, you know, it, it, to me, the debates don't matter. Nothing matters because anything but Trump to me. So, I don't care who wins the Democratic debate. I hope the best candidate wins, but there's no sense in me trying to say, well, I'm gonna, you know, I want to support this candidate well, over that. Well, it's candidate it's a for, it, isn't it a foregone co conclusion on your part that it doesn't really matter who the Democratic nominee is? You're going to vote I mean. for them. That's that's yeah. why. Yeah. Like last time around, I did watch the debates and all that. This time. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to get behind whichever candidate makes it out. Hey, so move, I don't, do me a favor. Yeah. Move your mouthpiece a little closer to your mouth. I don't it's think a, I can. It's a hard. It's oh, solid. I see. It's kind of. It's kind of a little tinny, sounding. The mic. Mm. You know, you might see what you can do about it, or get your money back from Amazon, one or the other. You know. This was a. This was a work purchase. They purchased it. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there isn't any setting in here. Yeah. Go to audio, video settings, audio, microphone, nothing here about quality. Yeah, you just upped the volume, didn't you? No, I didn't no? touch it. Oh, really? Yeah. But anyway, you know, I mean, I, I think that, that what's happening with these late night shows is a harbinger of, of what's going on. The people are just sick and tired of this. I mean... Everybody started jumping on this. How long have we been doing this now? They've been doing this a ye over a year now. Oh, it, maybe years. longer. You know, and I'm tired. People get tired of this. They shouldn't have really started going with all of this till now. Yeah. Money in the bank. Ratings. Yeah, yeah. but, it, but it's going to turn around and bite them in the ass because they're going to find their ratings are going to start tanking. People are sick of Trump. They're sick of hearing about Trump. They're sick of hearing about anything to do with Trump, including the impeachment. So do you think the Fox people are sick of hearing about Trump, too? If I, I've tuned over to Fox to see what they're doing. They're not talking as much about all of this. Mm. They're talking about other stuff because they know that they don't want to be known as the network of Trump just in case things go really south. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But meanwhile, MSNBC, MSNBC thinks they've, they've hitched their 
wagons to a star by by going with this whole thing and that it's going to make them, it's going to put them on the map. It's going to identify them. And I got news for it. Yeah, it's identified them as the people who constantly carp against Trump. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not like I'm defending Trump here. I think Trump's a fucking asshole. But, you know, come on, there's other news. You know, so, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I, you know. What do you think, Kevin? You, you, you watch some of this crap, don't you? Yeah, that's, that's why I do go to Fox, just to, just to get the different side of it, because MSNBC's gotten, they've gone overboard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, although I do, I do like, I do have to confess I watch Colbert every night because I like the way he attacks Trump every night. I, 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 watch, his, I watch his monologue because I like he's got creative ways of doing it. But it and is. I, and it I like is, Colbert. It's still kind of predictable, you know. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's a little different the way I just like Colbert. I guess I don't uh, know. Rob Schneider said to me in the interview that I did with him about a year ago that he doesn't do any Trump material because he thinks it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Well, it's it too is. Easy. It is. It's easy. But yeah. you, you, if you go about sure. it different ways, but he has me laughing the last fifteen minutes before I fall asleep. Yeah, <laughs> and that's all you want to do. That's all I want to do. By yeah. the way, no, you know, on those late night shows, uh, I found this fact out that uh, most of them have to top load the show for the first fifteen minutes because most people don't watch it past that. That's exactly right. Because they're going to sleep, they're passing out. I'm usually, I'm usually about twenty minutes in. I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I that's set why, my sleep timer for about thirty minutes, and I know I'm not there at the end. That's why Letterman always put the rock group or the comedian on at the end of the show. Yeah. Because he knew by that time nobody was watching, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 so I mean, it, it, I just think it's uh, it's uh, it's a bad thing to be doing. To if I if I had one of those networks, I'd immediately say, "Enough with us doing Trump." You know, when Trump does something that's worthy of news, okay, then we'll talk about him. But until then, find other places to to get your news. You know. Well, that's what I did today. I was watching uh, MSNBC when he was going for the the signature for the that China thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And they put it on, but they kind of drifted off of it. And so I flipped it over to Fox, and they did they they did it all. And that guy must have thanked everybody for an hour and a half while they yeah. were split screening the signature, you know, the 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 debate coming up. And they're split. They're triple screening everything, and and, and Trump's in there. He must have introduced everybody in the world, including well, well, the know, janitor. I think if yeah. he was walking down the hall, he'd have pulled the janitor in and said, "Thank you for the janitor." You know why? You know why he was. You know why he was doing that, Kevin? He was. Yeah, he was diverting. He was diverting because over on the other channel, Pelosi was saying, "Here are the." Uh, articles yeah, of impeachment, yeah. and we're sending them over now. And here are the seven people I've picked to be the I don't know whatever the job is. <laughs> I mean, he is was there. up there going, "Thank you for the guy that made the pencils, and thank you for the guy that loaded the pens." And you know, it was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mister Bick, for making Bick pens. And he, oh. he's uh, he's great at cre knowing how to create diversion. It was an, at least an hour and fifteen minutes of thank yeah. yous. And the, the Chinamen were standing there just going, oh, my God, is this guy going to finish or what? I just want to sign the damn paper and go eat lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, I just, uh, that, that, that's, you know, but the, the fact is that what they do is they do cover him, you know. They do cover yeah. this sort of stuff. And I've seen them cover him doing some of the most inane stuff just so they can have Trump on their network. And this is yeah. not Fox. This is MSNBC. This is CNN. You know, I mean, this then, is four and a half, five years old now because that's the way it was when he was running, and it's and it'll continue until he, if he ever, rides off into the sunset. I hate CNN. I hate MSNBC, and I hate them for precisely one reason: they got Trump elected because they gave him free publicity. He didn't have to go out and buy ad time. You know, everybody else, Bloomberg is spending $80 billion on ad time right now, and nobody's giving him free publicity, but they're giving him, the, they'll do it again. Nothing but free publicity yeah. for Trump. He doesn't have to spend money, you know. 
Plus, he's got a shitload of it, I understand, this time, you know. Uh, when you're a success, there are contributors. Have you, have, have you seen the Trumpy Bears um, commercial? Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. You, wait a minute. Where, what, what, are you, what did she do with my Trumpy Bear? Who bought you? Oh. Really? You sent money to Trump? I bought a Trumpy Bear. Hold on a second. I got to find a Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear. Where are you? Marjorie Trumpy probably bear? threw it out. Are you in the closet? There we go. Here Put it in the blender. Hmm. It's just <laughs> holy shit. There we go. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh no, I had to. I had to. Um, I had to run that. Have this because, uh, in fact, I've got the commercial here somewhere, but I don't want to take time to find it now. <laughs> but uh, there's Trumpy Bear wearing a Chinese city capital uh, sweatshirt. Uh, Mm-hmm. And uh, Marjorie put him in the uh, in the closet because she's sick and tired of him. That's Turn him okay. around. I want to see if he's been sexually abused. Yeah, but you know, you know what it has in the back. If you open it up, he has a, uh, a little zipper, and you unzip that zipper around the neck, and there's an American flag inside. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> see, look. If you look carefully, look. If you see the back of him, can you see that? There's the yeah. American flag right there, folks. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. When I see that commercial, I change the channel. I don't care what I'm watching. I saw that commercial. I was laughing my fucking head off. Yeah, I've maybe. never seen it. No? Maybe. No. And I don't watch a lot of commercials because most everything I watch is DVR, but I seem to see that one a lot. Yeah, uh, I uh, I have a copy of it here somewhere, but I don't want to, as I say, go looking for it right now. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, it, there's all, it, and they have a guy on a motorcycle, and he's got Trumpy Bear on the front of the motorcycle, Jeez. saying, "I take my Trumpy Bear wherever I go." You know, oh, it's it's uh, so uh, cheesy. It's just well, what it is is some other kind of bear that they put this hair on here. <laughs> you know, so. There you go. Where, do, where I wonder where the money goes that uh, they're collecting. Oh, believe Trump me, here. it it just goes to the company, which is. Let me see here. I've got the tag on it still. It has care instructions. Uh, feed his ego. That's one. Burn of the, it. You know. well, let's see here. Remove one. Uh, let's see. To clean your Trumpy Bear. Unpack. Blah 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 blah. Here it is. Distributed by Exceptional Products Incorporated of uh, Dallas, Texas. Made in China. China, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. That's how you make America great again. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's. You probably pay more for it now than you would when you bought it. Yeah. There's there's my. That's tr- going to be a collector's thing someday. I uh, I hope not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But as I say, this is a uh, city capital. I don't know what this was for. I think this was an overshirt for racing, for like, you know, doing a, a foot race uh-huh. somewhere. But anyway, get out of here, Trumpy Bear. There we go. <laughs> Trumpy Bear. He's face down now in my crotch. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, but oh, yeah, that Trumpy Bear commercial, you got to find it, Kevin. It's, it's hilarious. Where did you I'm see sure, it? I, I'm sure if you uh, go on YouTube, you'll find it. Yeah. yeah by I'm by sure the way, hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I will go to YouTube. Okay. Let me go to another. Let me get another YouTube up here, and then I will just tump, uh, type in Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Oh, oh, come on. Trumpy Bear. There we go. Commercial 2018. And uh, here he is. Let me see here. I uh, Where do I have um, uh, my video? Uh, video? Video? Oh, a camera? Split screen? Wait a minute. I had something here where I could uh, I could go to. Um, um, oh, hold on a second. Where I could go to the uh, my web... No, my web page. How, how do I? How did I do that before? I can have a, have a thing that I can go to my uh, um, video. Who did, who did we lose? We lost. Um, lost Tom. Uh, yeah, we lost Tom. Did we lose Tom. Uh, Might have been some kind of problem he had. Uh, but we'll leave him there just in case he wants to call back. Let me see here. I'm trying to figure out where I put the uh, the thing for. Um, um, 
the video. I guess it could be here. Let me see here. Is this it? There we go. Okay. So I could then, let's see here, Trumpy Bear commercial. Okay. Can you see that? Well, it, we'd have to be watching the, the program yeah. feed. Which oh, oh, really? I can see it on YouTube, yeah. And loves to cruise yeah. with there we go, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, the wind whispered through the forest. A storm is coming. You cannot defeat the storm. From the trees rose a resounding voice. I fear nothing. I come when the trumpet sounds. I am the storm, the great American grizzly. Introducing the original Trumpy Bear, the fearless, super plush American grizzly. Trumpy Bear was born June 14th, Flag Day. Just find the secret zipper and pull out the flag blanket. Then wrap yourself in the red, white, and blue for comfort and warmth. Show your oh patriotism and proudly display <laughs> Trumpy on Flag Day and on any American holiday. Trumpy can even honor your own family heroes. God bless America and God bless Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear sits proudly at the front of the motorcycle for all the world to see and loves to cruise with his brother. I'm a former Marine and I'm proud to have Trumpy Bear ride by my side. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Everyone knows Trumpy Bear loves to go to the golf course. When I ride with Trumpy Bear, he makes my golf game great again. Thank you, Trumpy Bear. <laughs> Simply style his trademark hair and place him in his favorite chair. Even the toughest guys will love Trumpy Bear. When America is great, business is great. When business is great, I am great. I love you, Trumpy Bear. I am an Army veteran. I am proud to own the Trumpy Bear, and I will always be proud to be an American. Order the Super Plus <laughs> Trumpy Bear for only two payments of 1995 and receive a special certificate of authenticity. Don't miss out on owning a piece of American history. Order now for only two payments of 1995. Trumpy, the most fearless bear bucks. anywhere. Order now. If you watch the video with that, it's, it makes it double the cheese. That's how cheesy it is. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. That's uh, Trumpy Bear, folks. That's the whole Trump, Trumpy Bear deal. I, I thought you'd enjoy it. I if thought you, you would enjoy that. If you order today, you get two, two yeah. for the price of one. Any of you get huh? to see it at all? I guess you couldn't see it on your side. Yeah, I watched it on the YouTube, yeah. 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 Uh, there's a way in which I could feed it to you, but I can't figure that one out. So forget it. <laughs> it's too, God, that's too cheese. much trouble. Yeah, yeah. Cheese grated twice. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and there's a sucker born every minute who. Wait a minute, I bought one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I do my best. Uh, so anyway, I wonder what happened to Tom. I guess we lost him, huh? Internet, he was having internet problems. Nah, son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, let yeah, me. He I, just poofed and he was gone. I'll just leave him blank up there as a memorial, and it, then it looks like I have a lot of people here. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mean, I just, you know, I'm sick of, uh, I'm sick of it all. I mean, uh, I know that, I know that Rob has been for a long time. And you may remember when he got first got elected, I didn't watch the news for about six months, which made it really hard doing a show like this. <laughs> so I had to come up with other stuff to talk about. Um, like, for instance, wait a minute, hold on a second. I got, I got to go over here. Why I don't bring this stuff closer to me when I'm doing the show. Did you hear about Jeopardy? What? They had oh, the, yeah. they had the Jenkins the, won. They had the finals, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jenkins won. And uh he uh there we go. Here comes Tom. We should Tom. see him in motion any moment now. There we go. Hi there Tom. He is. <laughs> had problems, huh, Tom? Yeah, I okay. having problems again tonight. Well, we left your space available. I know. Yeah. I went back to YouTube and saw me there. Oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> stiff. Anyway, Ken, they, they've been holding this thing called the, the greatest uh, uh, Jeopardy, uh, the greatest of all time. And they had the three top winners on Jeopardy. The one, uh, James Holhauser, who had uh, won the most money in the least amount of time and the most money in any given day on several occasions. It was like the top 10 slots for that. And then you had Ken Jennings, 
who had the longest streak. He went for like 76 episodes or something incredible like that. And then you had the other guy, uh, and I can't even remember his name. Wait a minute, it's here somewhere. Uh, he, uh, he, he, is, he had the most money ever won on Jeopardy. So they put all three of them together on Jeopardy in this match, and they put, didn't put this in syndication. They put this on ABC in prime time. Guess what? It got higher ratings than the World Series. Yeah. Well, that's not hard to under. That's not hard to believe because baseball is a very regional game. Mm-hmm. So I'm um, I'm sure that in the cities where, yeah. like, uh, where the like in Washington D.C. and uh, whoever the hell they played, I'm sure those cities got higher World Series ratings than the Jeopardy show. But I think nationally, overall, Jeopardy is more important to more people. Well, here's how it went: the the uh, ratings for uh, this thing for Tuesday night, which was the the winning the night that it ran last, which was last night, uh, indicate the program was number one f- on the night. Total viewers of 13,511 million. And adults, uh, excuse me, 13.511 million. And adults, 18 to 49, with a 1.9 rating. Uh, they know that the three nights of the tournament last week averaged 15 million viewers, uh, and um, which compares favorably with Fox's average 14 million viewers for the World Series last fall. So, you know. By the way, we lost Charlie Wallace now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A bad night for the Internet, I guess. Um, yeah, so... Um, uh, you know, maybe maybe we scared him with way with the Trumpy Bear thing, but I'll keep him there just in case he comes back on. Okay. Um, here here was something I didn't like. Here, let me read you this headline. Okay. Uh, former SNL personality dies. Now, what do you think that story was about? <laughs> right. Now, if I if I mention that it was an article about. The death of Buck Henry. Oh wow! Oh, okay. Was a he writer. Would, yeah, but yeah. It, uh, SNL. He, I think he wrote SNL. A well, little no, bit. no, he, no, he and didn't he write host, SNL. He was a guest host. He was a, a guest lot, host ten times on SNL. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but his identity. If if I were to identify, if somebody were to say to me, "What did Buck Henry do?" The last thing I would come up with is SNL. Mm-hmm. I would say he wrote The Graduate. I would say he wrote Catch Twenty Two, the movie. He created Get Smart with Buck with uh, Mel Brooks. I, I go on and on about Buck Henry and things he's done. You know, and then maybe I might come up with, oh yeah, he did SNL a couple of times. Yeah, but you know why that is? Mm-hmm. They're they're writing for twenty somethings who don't know any of that stuff. Well, this wasn't, believe it or not, this was on a uh, on a biz- professional broadcast. Uh, site uh it was on uh what was the site i can't remember the name of it uh oh tv new tv week yeah still so, young yeah. young demographic they're not going to think it gets smart yeah yeah mm-hmm. um and uh, let me see here it's right? like saying martin yeah. is is uh, you know connected to to snl yeah you know it has the same connections you know i don't i don't know it doesn't make any sense you know it became a big deal sometimes people die and, you know, they were never really popular, but for some reason, either it's a dead news week or whatever, yep. and and then everybody waxes poetic about this dead star and who died, and everybody was doing a story on it, was Ed Burns, known as Kooky, on 77 Sunset Strip back in the 50s. Wow. Okay, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Yeah, you don't even know who I'm talking about, right? No, that's I know who it is. Yeah, you know who it is. But he was a star for about a minute and a half. Yeah. Oh, about a couple of years. Well, the, all right. Two oh, and, no. Okay, two and a half minutes. All right. I mean, 77 Sons you know, was a big, big show. And, and, and he even had a hit record. Yeah. As, I, as I'm was, 63 and don't yeah. know anything. He wasn't in my lifetime. I mean, let's face it, there are people today, kids, who don't know who Paul Newman was. Okay, so get used to that, old folks. Uh, you know, but I mean, 
It, no, he only had his his stardom was only maybe a couple of years, and it was just because he was on TV every week, and he had a hit record because he was on TV every week, and the girls all he was on the front of Teen Beat magazine because he was on television every week. The minute he wasn't on television every week, everybody went, "Who was? Uh, oh, where's Ed Burns these days? Did you remember him? You know." So I mean. But, I mean, all of a sudden, he dies, and it's like everywhere. Guess who died? Ed Burns. Oh, well, also Buck Henry. What? Let's have a little priorities here. You know, Buck Henry, much more important than, uh, than uh, Ed Kooky Burns, yeah. as it were. <clears throat> you know. So that was, that was the headline that really bothered me. Uh, I had a couple other items, but I've had, I've, I, I print them out, and then I don't use them on the show. And then a couple. Of, I, then I get a couple of weeks later, and they're still there. Like, juror unleashes expletive in open court after learning the case involves Harvey Weinstein. Did you hear this one? No. Well, I guess yeah. if you didn't, I, I it was worth it for me to, to save it. Um, an incident last Thursday in New York courtroom where former movie movie mogul. Harvey Weinstein's sexual assault case is being tried. Reports that a female juror was heard to say, heard to say oh, shit, upon learning she was a potential <laughs> juror in the Weinstein case. Uh, after Justice Jane Burke summoned 120 jurors into the courtroom, packing the gallery and jury box, he announced the name of the case, People of the State of New York against Harvey Weinstein, the Post reports noting the name of the case prompted the woman's outburst. I wonder if she said, oh, shit, because uh, she, uh, uh, she just was referring to uh, Weinstein or that she went, oh, fuck, I thought I was going to be on a case that was going to last two days. You know? Mm-hmm. Probably a little both. Yeah. yeah. Because, it means it, because it's so prominent, maybe being sequestered and all that. This is the kind of case you don't want to be part of, okay? Absolutely. You know, if you've got to serve jury duty, this is not jury duty, okay? Huh. Um, Unless you're by, have lots of time on your hands. It, yes, yeah. And you don't mind being sequestered because I have a feeling that, you know, there's they're going to want to, because the news is going to be all over it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, yeah, you know, it's whatever. I, I'll bet he skates. I, I got a feeling he's going to skate. He's got the best lawyers in the world. They're already trying to get the judge off the case. Um, you know, they're, they're doing everything possible. It's going to be hard to, to, uh, to give him what you would consider a fair trial because of the, all the press and, you know, he's been tried in the news. It's, you know, you can make motion after motion to say, that it's going to be hard to find a, an impartial jury. Um, it would be. It, let me put it this way: the first thing you ask a juror is, "Have you heard about this case?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if you say yes, then you're probably not a good juror, right? But if you say no, you're really stupid and uninformed, <laughs> or you're lying because you want to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I, th- I don't think though that's a reason to do away with jury. And also, don't they have only so many preemptory ch- uh, uh, challenges before they can't they have to take anybody? Okay, but I think after I, and again, don't quote me. I worked at Court TV and went through all the OJ stuff. Yeah. But I think at at some point you could you could make a motion that you don't think that the jury is is. Uh, I don't know what the legal term is, but that it's, you know, that you don't think the jury is going to be able to uh, come up with a fair verdict because of, you know, all the media coverage. The OJ trial was moved, even still kind of silly. You think the whole world watched that slow speed chase and everything that went on. And so they changed the city. Uh, What does that really mean? You could move it to New York. You could have moved it across country. It's in the same same thing. But, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. Let me try calling Charlie back. Let's see if he's, you know, if he's going to, if he's around. Let me see. Charles Wallace. There we go. Uh, let me, uh, let me try and call him and see if, if he's having trouble or whether he just got bored. Uh, that could be too, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, well, no, unavailable. Huh. Must, it could be something, you know. 
with his uh, internet. Uh, but anyway. Um, so what have you been up to lately, Rob? We're, uh, we're down to that part of the program. What are you up to, Rob? Just uh, more of the same, really. Just busy, busy, busy at work. And um, when you, you know, when I was kind of looking forward to having some time to call in and all that, because I was off, you were on vacation, because I took off for most of the holidays and went back to work after January yeah. uh, 3rd. So um, you were off, I was off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, now, I've been spending my money, or, we, or Marjorie and I have been spending money uh, over the last couple of weeks. On what, Alex? New furniture? Vacation? Trumpy bear? Trumpy bear? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I bought a whole case of Trumpy bears. Yeah. Um, uh, no, um, actually, uh, we got a bill from our lawyer for $11,000 the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Now that gets does that get pushed off until after the trial to see who pays it? Well, you know, I I told my lawyers I got really frustrated when I saw that that price. Okay, yeah. uh, and I know the guy's doing preparation and so on, but I you know I mean it was like a, read a deposition in the toilet, you know, and then they, they charged me at four fifty an hour. Um. Uh, and more particularly Marjorie, because we're getting it from her. Um, uh, she has a loan for her apartment and whatever. Anyway, uh, is and so I, what happened was last time we went to court, the judge said to us, "Would you be willing to settle for twenty-two fifty a month rent?" And I went, "No, I'd like fifteen hundred dollars a month rent, but we can argue about that." And we walked away from it, and I'm go home and I'm thinking about it and I'm going, this judge doesn't even know what the case is about because it's not about what I'm going to pay in rent. You know, that's to be determined between the, the landlord and ourselves and what's right under rent stabilization and all of that. Mm. Not because I'm willing to take 20. That's not going to solve the, the, the problem. It's not going to solve the case. Uh, the case is a whole different case. It's a case about this guy costing us, uh, you know, charging us more than he should have for this uh, for this apartment. So, whatever. Wait a minute. What, what happened to Charlie? M missed call. Now, that's weird. Oh, there he is. There he He's is. He's coming back. Okay, there there's Charlie. He's back again. Yeah, my computer crashed. That's what I figured. You know, mm. it's always those damn computers. That and the damn internet. That and the damn damn. Anyway, so anyway, uh, uh, you know, I got to thinking about that, and I wrote my lawyer, and I said, look, I'm fed up with this thing. I said, this judge doesn't have an, any idea of what it's all about. I said, uh, you know, you sent us a bill for 11, for actually for $13,000. They lowered it to 11000 when I complained, okay? <laughs> and I said, I, you know, we're not made of money. You know, we are, I played this card, we are seniors, Okay, yeah. we're living on. And you a you have cancer too. And I have cancer. I'm throwing that one in. I'm throwing. I'm playing that one when we're in court. Oh well, you know I have problems. What I have cancer. You know. And then everybody, you really get all weepy over that. Oh, you've got cancer. Oh, you only have a few years to live, and we've got to let you stay in that wonderful apartment. You know. No. Yeah. Yeah. What What are your expectations? What are the chances you're going to die? <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but it, 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 um, it, I, I just said, you know, we're, we're all older. We live, uh, you know, uh, Marjorie's still working to help pay for this thing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I said, I've just had it with it. I said, I don't have any intention of showing up. I said, I, you know, if, if you're going to allow this fucking judge to get away with thinking that the whole case is how much I'm going to pay in rent, you know, then we're, we're over right now. You know, I said, Marjorie said she's still going to show up. I said, but I'm not going to. So I get a letter from the guy who runs the firm and he says, oh, we'll take $2,000 off the bill. I went, oh, that's, that's nice, but it's still not <laughs> enough, you know. And he said, and, and this is the good part, though. He said, I will show up and be at the court case. And not, probably not this week, not for the half day, but next week when we have three, uh, three days. He said, I will be there, and I will not charge you for my time. I will charge it to your 
the, to the plane, to the, uh, the, the guy who rented us the apartment, right? You know, as part of trying to settle the whole thing. Uh, he said he won't charge us. But I told him, I said, I, I want it to be a priority that we get our, our uh, what do you call it back? Our uh, uh, money back from the, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, for the lawyers because we didn't do anything. You know? Yeah, but for, for all this money that you that it's costing you the eleven thousand now and everything you paid up till now, yes. what's the payoff if you win? The payoff How much? Is, the pay is it worth it? Well, the payoff should be this, okay? All the money that we paid him over what he was paying in rent, which would be about two thousand dollars a month over thirty two months, and then because he violated rent stabilization laws. What they call treble damages it really would be double, two, twice more than that. Okay, three times the re that that amount, plus uh, our our what do you call it back? Our uh, legal fees back, and um, I think was there anything else? No, that's about it. You know, but we're we're talking right there. We're talking uh, 160000 dollars plus the attorney's fees, which brings us up around two hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, you bet your life, you know. Yeah, Trumpy bears for everyone. Trump, I buy Trump. If I if we win this case, I will buy you all Trumpy bears. So, yeah, well, you know. Get, Give them to your kids. Let them grow up conservative. You know, uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But anyway, so I... I I'll put it on my motorcycle. But, I, you know, this is something people say constantly, and I, I've never been in a situation more than now where I know it to be true. And that is the only people who get wealthy in this world are the fucking lawyers. Yep. The, we, the, it, it, no one of us is going to make as much money out of this deal, out of getting a settlement out of this deal, as the lawyers are all making off of this case. Oh, it's always that way. Two-thirds, that's the usual. Two-thirds. If, if, Two if, if So far, we figure we have paid out $68,000 in legal fees. Wow. Okay? So if you figure wow. everybody in the case has put out 68000 Okay. Jeez. How much are the lawyers making out of this? And how much are any of us going to get back for all of this? You know. I mean, the guy who runs has the apartment, he's trying to get $350,000. No way he's ever going to even get that. He'll be lucky if he, if he gets anything and has to wind up paying our attorney's fees, you know? Um, yeah, the guy that loses really loses. <laughs> yeah, but all I'm saying is, all these lawyers, I, I see them. They, we come into court, and there are three sets of lawyers there, you know, yeah. and they're all billing out at four fifty an hour, uh, yeah. all three of them for three hours. Okay, figure that one out right there. Can you imagine what somebody like Trump has got? You know, fifty lawyers running around chasing him around. I'll bet you something. I bet he doesn't pay those lawyers. Oh, I'll bet he doesn't either. Yeah, yeah that's probably just a, a you know one of those. You know, high profile, they do it. Like OJ didn't wind up paying a lot of the money to the attorneys. Yeah, but it's pro bono. They did it. They they did it for yeah. high. Uh, you know, the high visibility. Pro boner. It's you know? pro. It's pro boner. Bon it, except except for Giuliani, who can't get one. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anti. -boner. Didn't didn't one of his lawyers or something uh, spill the beans again today, or another no, one? No, what beans happened today? was it was the guy, one of those guys that was Giuliani's uh, guy in the Ukraine that they arrested. Yeah, 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 they? yeah. He's he spilled it's the beans. He so said, he said he's he's willing to testify that the president did do all these things. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, he said the vice president what? will do it also. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yes. Who? Clean Mike. What? No. What were you going to say, Tom? He's got pictures. He's standing next to like people like Trump and and Jared Kushner and Ivanka. You know, he's he's got pictures standing with him. And then they say, I don't know him. Yeah, Trump I says I don't know him. who he is. He said, Well, here's a picture of you with your arm around him. 
You know, in fact, he's giving you, he's, he's blowing you. Do you remember him at all? <laughs> never, never seen him before. I don't know who that is. Yeah. It's that new technology out where you can't trust photographs or video anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, it's just, you know, so, I mean, this guy is willing to testify against Trump. Uh -huh. yeah. You yeah. know, so, um, but we'll see if they, if they get to do the, uh, the whole thing. What you know what I have you haven't heard about, and I don't watch the news, but all of the stuff that was going on in the Southern District of New York with Trump, did that just dry up? Did it not materialize? Did anything not materialize from any of that? What do you what do you say? What, wait a minute, we can't hear you. Tom, we can't hear you. Tom. Wait, there's some, wait, Tom, there's something wrong with your microphone. There's something wrong with your microphone. Tom? Can you hear me? Are you using a laptop? Are you using a laptop? Pick it, pick it, pick it up a second. Pick it up. Yeah. Pick it up. Now we can talk to us now. Now we can talk to us now. Can you hear me now? Now I yeah. can hear you. Yeah. You see, there was something you were muffling the microphone or something. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, as I say, that case is still going on, and and the judge just uh, allowed the release of the part of stuff to the to house just today, mm -hmm. so or yesterday actually. Yeah, yeah. Still going. Yeah, it's still uh, going on. Uh, fingers are crossed. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they yeah, can. I'm, uh, I'm I'm thinking there's a volcano brewing and it's going to explode pretty soon. <laughs> Well, he's trying to put all his fingers in the dike, but then again, yeah. he, as you know, he can touch anybody where he wants to. Yeah. Uh, but he, he keeps wanting to put his fingers in the dike, and, and it just another hole spurts through, you know? Yeah. Uh, and how long he can keep doing this, he just thinks he can get away with it. And so far, he has. And he will. Yeah. You figure he will? Yes, he will. Do you think he's, he's going to get four more years. No. As much as I hate it, I think he's. I think the Democrats are foolhardy, and they're arguing within, and they're fighting with each other. And in the end, people are going to vote for Trump because there's nothing coming out of the Democratic Party. And also, and also because uh, they have their Trumpy bears. Well, that's true. That too. Yeah. That money is going into the 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 Make America Keep America Great Again, uh, you know, war fund. Now let let's forget about the clowns that are up there right now, you know, who are all f vying for the American Idol version of politics. Uh, if all of a sudden we decided that at the convention we were going to draft somebody, is there anybody out there who we could draft? Ah, there's a good question. I don't know why you call them clowns. I, I, I really think that they're 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 a really good group of candidates myself. Yeah. And I don't mm. just the, the you know, you may well, you know, obviously I've been the minority here. I mean, but yeah, I I think we've got a, a really good set of candidates and I believe we could win if we just if we just, you know, stop taking a defeatist attitude. Well, yeah. I don't know that it's a defeatist attitude to say that I don't think that uh, Elizabeth Warren is much of a candidate. And I don't think Joe Biden is much of, of a candidate. I mean, the only one that comes close to being able to win against Trump out of that bunch is Biden, and that's sad. Well, there's no, there's no. You know what? You could think about all of the altruism of what a good presidential candidate is. Trump it was the anti that, and he got elected because he knows how to. He's media savvy. He's people savvy. He knows how to control situations. And that got him elected, not because he has great policy. He had no policies. He had, we all know he's he's a big empty, you know, he's all form and no substance, right? You could have all the substance in the world, but we don't have a candidate that's going to break through and and unite people. You just we just don't. They may be great people, but they're going to lose. Rob, I'm going to give you a term. Tell me what the term means. Killer. It, it, somebody creates something. It's a killer app. What's a killer app? It just. Unbelievable! Just, just crazy, amazing. You got to have it. App killer, killer app application. Yeah. Well, we need the killer app candidate, and we don't have them. 
Right, we don't. And we may have some good ideas and some good people. I'm not going to argue that the people aren't good, but they're not dynamic and they don't know how – they the, the, the Democrats just fall all over themselves when it comes to the media and sticking together the way the Republicans do. We just don't have that – uh, there's no glue that holds everything together with a unified message. This guy is a real cl- – and he's an ass clown, and yet the whole Republican Party's behind him. They're not fighting. You would think they would be fighting over him. This guy is a nut. we got to put somebody else up there. Nope. They're all afraid of him. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to win. Not yeah. going to win. Well, you know uh, – I'll vote for the Democrat. Don't get me wrong, I, but – Hey, I'll vote for whoever the Democrat is. Yeah, me but, too. You know, and I may not like him. I'll hold my nose and I'll vote. You yeah, know? absolutely. But, uh, I just... but you know, because I'm not voting for Trump. Come on, you know. And am I going to yeah. vote for some third party candidate? I'm sorry. Is Jill Stein running again? In my opinion, the the, the thing that we have saving us here, I think we need the least. Like with Hillary, there was so much hate about Hillary that people voted for Trump or didn't vote at all. If, if we put somebody out there who people don't hate, I think we have a chance as opposed to like that's why I think Biden's bad, because he's got so much negative about him yeah. and so much history that I think Biden's bad. Uh, I, I think Biden. I'll tell you why Biden's bad. What, what made Biden bad? Uh, Trump uh, sullied the brand. OK, uh, he even if he, you know, he, what he wanted to do was find stuff on Biden in the Ukraine, which was a notion given to him by that Vladimir Putin. OK, um, and he couldn't get it. But what he did as a result is everybody said, oh, there was some kind of problem with Joe Biden in the Ukraine. And even if it wasn't true, even if it wasn't actionable, even if it wasn't anything, what he did was he neutralized Biden by just that right. insinuation. You know, he didn't have to say Biden did this anymore. It was the fact that they were looking into the fact, did Biden's son do this? And they're going to do that with anybody. Maybe, I don't know who would the, who's the untouchable candidate? Who's the one that has no, you can't find any dirt on to Sully? Who? Well, who's I'll tell the, you who you can't. I'll tell you who you can't. And it's going to sound strange because he has enough things against him. He would normally have enough things against him, but his entire life is out there, and that's Pete Buttigieg. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to make fun of him because he's gay? I don't think you can because he admits he's gay. He's not hiding anything. He's proud of being gay. All right. Um, what else are you going to get him for? His military record? I'm sorry, he's got one, which Trump doesn't. Uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, he's a, a Harvard graduate, uh, you know, Ivy League school. I mean, we could go on and on. Buttigieg is the hardest candidate for him to kind of make fun of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, would you agree with me on that one, Tom? I mean, um, the, the fact that he's gay may hurt him in certain parts of the country, but it's not a thing that Trump could use against him. I think the one thing about all the candidates is, once again, we're dealing with, with Russian dis, disinformation campaigns. Yeah. And like this thing we were talking about earlier about the, the, the this rift between uh, Sanders and, and Warren, mm -hmm. uh, the Russian bots will do anything to, you know, to gin that up. Yeah. And and that's why, that's my main concern with, with, with this coming election is that we're, we're, we're basically dealing with the same, you know, the, the, the same, you could say, psychological warfare that, that we, we had in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. And it says, why did, why did people hate Hillary? Well, I mean, you know, because when, when Hillary Clinton came from being the Secretary of State, she was very popular, you mm -hmm. know, really popular. But, but uh, the, you know, the, the disinformation and, and the propaganda... And, and after all that, uh, and I, I, I think you have to. I think you they have just to. Finished, they just finished the 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 uh, last investigation of her emails mm -hmm. and didn't find anything. Well, that's you know? that's fine. But what 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 is this? I just answered, Rob. Uh, are you there, Rob? Rob, are oh, there? Oh, Rob left. Let me see here. What's the problem here? Let me. 
Here we go. Here he comes again. We, he, he got out of there for a while. Hello, Rob. Okay, wow. there he is. Okay. That was the weirdest thing. My internet went. I never lose internet. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, no, here, 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 here's, here's the thing, Tom. I think the problem with Hillary Clinton was she could have won that election, but she really fucked up. Oh, God, look who's coming along here. Uh, the one guy you all came on oh. tonight to miss. Uh, <laughs> he's done beating up old ladies. He's done beating up old ladies, and now he's going to come beat up on our nice little... Pat, you got to be nice to them th not tonight, uh, Phil. Uh, I'm nice to them every night. No, you, no, you're not. Yeah, you, you just, yeah uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm a real prince. We know, we know your position on everything, so you don't have to state it tonight, okay? Yeah, no problem. Hey, uh, did you guys hear that uh, uh, live mic conversation backstage between uh, um, uh, Warren and? Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders. It wasn't behind back, backstage. It was up there on the on the stage. I thought that they talked to each other afterwards, and somebody uh, caught it on uh, a live after, mic afterwards. And but somebody's were... saying, "Did you call me a liar?" Uh, and then Bernie says, "No, nah, I don't want to talk about this." And yeah. uh, it wasn't backstage. No, it was on stage. Am I right? Really? People? Am I right? Anybody? What I saw today because I heard something on stage, but then I heard this other one that sounded much more detailed and sort of you know you know how I feel about that uh, huh. exactly what was brought up here earlier tonight, and I think it was reasonable, and that is uh, it, everybody's trying to gin up this situation, you know, mm -hmm. and so they will take a situation like that and try and put more to it than there really was. You know, yeah. of course, these people are going to be heated against each other. They're in a locked in mortal combat here for the nomination. Uh, so those things are bound to happen occasionally. But let's not take advantage of them. You know, there's something wrong with doing that. Would you guys agree with what I just said? I agree with you. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's the, you know. But All right. again... Uh, 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 you know, Rob was. Uh, we were we were talking about the fact that I still ask the question: Is there a person who is good enough to be drafted? Uh, is there anybody out there? Do the Democrats have a, a, anything out there in their pocket that they don't know about? They must. Well, who? I can't think of anybody uh, who is willing to do it. I don't know, but uh, yeah. I would think that there's there's somebody out there uh, that uh, is just is clean, uh, reasonable, uh, isn't uh, caught up in all of this anti-Trump stuff. Because that that's the problem is that nobody is pre on the Democratic side is really presenting much of a. Uh, picture as to what they want for the future. Oh, I think you know, they are. They I, want free this and well, free no, that. Well, no, wait, 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 wait. But that's what they want for the future, Phil. Yeah. They are talking yeah. about that, and they're not talking <laughs> anti-Trump. Yeah, we, but you know, I've heard that before. It was okay. like two chickens in every Hold pot. on a second. Let me ask the rest of the guys here. Do you think uh -huh. the other candidates are talking trash on Trump a lot, or do you think they're still dealing with their own message they're trying to get across? I think Biden is. I think Biden does yeah. the anti-Trump thing a lot. But Can I just interject one more thing? Yang is the only one that's saying, and also Tulsi Gabbard is is saying, hey, look, you know, I, I don't want to deal with this stuff. When I run against them, I'll run against them. But, uh, you know, these are the these are the things that I well, want. I, I think nobody's I think that's a reasonable approach to take at this point, you know. I think yeah. that to, to constantly bash away at Trump, just bash away. Go go with your message. Inspire America. You know, mm -hmm. I, I did. did right. I, I, remind me, Tom, because you you follow these things very closely. When Obama ran, did he ever kind of run against his candidate, or was he laying out his own vision of the future? I I don't think he was going against. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I really, I'm really have a really bad connection. I, I'd love to have a conversation. I really want to be a part of it, but uh, this is just isn't working for me again tonight. Yeah. Well, are you on a 5.1, and, and maybe you're out of the range of your router? 
Uh, and if you go no, on I, your 2.4? No. No? No, there's something else going on. It could be. But anyway, could be, I, I'm going to go. It could be he has a, a internet connection in Berkeley. That's what could, what it could be. You know. Yeah, it could also be I got on, but <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, Tom, so. thank you for anyway, calling. I'm going to go. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Bye, bye, Tom. Okay. There goes Tom Yamaguchi, ladies and gentlemen. Sad to see him go because we we really like him, and he's very positive uh, force in our. In our uh, in our discussions here, but uh, uh, he went away. Okay, there we go. Do you remember what the question Ooh. was you asked him? Uh, 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 Obama did Obama when he ran for president was he running against anybody or was he just laying out his vision of the future? I believe that he was laying out his vision for the future it was hope, change. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, it had nothing to do with uh, who was he? He ran against Hillary. Romney Hillary. and Hillary. And um, well, well, he ran uh, against oh, no, when he was actually running. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, he ran against uh, Mc, um, uh, McCain, McCain and uh, yeah. Romney. Yeah. And you know, uh, how how much can you trash talk McCain, even Romney, even you Romney. know? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, I think also. I hate to say this, Phil, and you're going to get very mad at this, but the fact is that Obama had a certain amount of class. Well, he did. You know, I, and, and, I, I liked Obama mm -hmm. you know, as a person. Wait a, minute, I, I wait, wait a minute. Can I take that as a uh, as a <laughs> audio clip that I can use over <laughs> sure. and over and as, over as, again? As a, as a politician, uh, I didn't care for him. But as a, as a person, I liked him. I even got uh, one of his uh, a book, uh, of Pete Souza's book, with all his pictures, a couple thousand pictures yeah. of uh, uh, the eight years that Pete Souza was his White House photographer. Yeah, it's supposed to be a very nice drinking. book. Too. What? <laughs> what did you say, Kevin? What did you say? Phil's been drinking at his event. Uh, <laughs> Just Starbucks. I had a Cafe Americano. Those are strong. Yeah. Um, but, I mean... Uh, uh, and I also think, you know, I think his family was a, a perfect uh, example of a well, a good family and, uh, you know, a good example to families everywhere. Um, Absolutely. He was he was presidential. Uh, he uh, he really worked well with a teleprompter. And uh, and when he stuck to it, he. You know, was a good representative of yes, uh, the vision of the of the office. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think he. You, no one could give a speech better to rally the country behind something. You know? The reason he became a candidate was because of the speech he gave at the Clinton. Uh, the right. Clinton uh, was it on inauguration or was it the? Uh, no, the. Uh, yeah. No, the. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was the DNC well, thing, no. and his speech at that time was was phenomenal. No, it, it, Everybody it, at that it, point it, said he should run for president. It was a speech. We don't have like anybody like that now in the Democratic no. Yeah, party. now when I talk about a killer app, he right. was a killer app. Right. Okay? I mean, this guy was... He, yep. uh, I, I described him once as a stealth candidate. If you had to go yep. around and cobble together the perfect candidate to win an election, it would be Obama. Highly charismatic yeah, but anybody that's that good, why would they want to subject themselves to what goes on in the president? Even even if you, you know, I the thing with Trump, why why would anybody in in a position where they could want win uh, the presidency want to put themselves uh, out for that kind of abuse? Well, this I, is part this of it. I terrible. think may be that there are some people who want to be president because they think they can do something good for the country now. And I'm saying that because in the case of the Clintons, the reason they wanted, Bill wanted to be president and she wanted him to be president, no, wasn't money. They were political junkies. Power. Yeah. Yeah, they were political junkies. And uh, this was part of the game they played. This was the way, forget it, they didn't have sex in their marriage. They didn't have to. They kept having, kept coming, playing politics, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 on the other hand, the Obamas, I think, really had a sense of of, of uh, public service. Uh, but he came out of that too. You know, he came out of uh, doing a lot of street work in the old days, and then doing some local politics. You know, so <clears throat> that was his inclination. He was an organizer. A community. He was organizer. an organizer. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you know, we don't, we don't have any of this in Trump. I mean, Trump's a completely different, an, different animal. Well, what, about, what about the Democratic candidates? Anybody like that who has that kind of, a, um, uh, you know, grass or roots? Do they have any roots in, in that kind of thing? Well, any you know, it's, it's what Phil just said that kind of hit a little bit on the truth. And that is that if there is a candidate out there who would be a great candidate for the Democrats... He's not being encouraged to become a candidate by today's politics. Why do you want to subject yourself to that, I think, is the question that Phil asked. And really what you got to get are, and I hate to say this, Phil, scumbags like Trump because they, they, because they want to win. They want to win for all the wrong reasons. They want to win because they, they were going broke and this will help them make some money, you know, to keep them afloat. Uh, I don't believe that. See, well, yeah, Trump you, has you, always you, been you don't uh, involved in the periphery yeah. of uh, of Kingmaker. Uh, so, for instance, people would come to Trump and ask his opinion uh, uh, well, before Phil, they would Phil, run for office. Phil, right? If, if you believe that, okay, then well, I, I saw it in the news in no, the you, last twenty five years. If you if you believe that, then I've got a bear I can sell you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, <laughs> trail of water. Uh, but the, um, uh, the the thing is, uh, Trump has been in the periphery, and he's always con uh, you know considered that he had an opinion as to the way that things <laughs> needed to be done. I was waiting for that one. <laughs> What's that say? Something capital? Citic, Citic oh, capital. Uh, That's the bank my wife works for. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, the uh, the Chinese yeah. bank. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what the Chinese well you know anyway that so what I'm saying is, is he's had his foot in this it's not like a guy that woke up one morning and said I want to run for president yeah I think that he's had this in the back of his mind for 35 40 years and I would have liked uh, to have seen what he would have done 35 years ago because I've heard him do interviews back in the day in the 80s and the 90s and it's not the guy that we see now that's could be true. It is it's, true. Oh, it's oh, like, oh, it's like what things... happened to Giuliani. I, I, you know, you watch old Giuliani stuff, right, from when he was mm -hmm. the mayor, when he first became mayor, all the way up until 9-11 when he was still mayor. And then you you see what Giuliani is today. It's almost like somebody took over his body. You, you know, somebody, you know somebody did. It's the seeds. No, it's the prostate seeds. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> it's the seeds. And, and the guy who's going to do my prostate seeds is the guy who did Giuliani. <laughs> So after I have the seeds in me, expect me to turn to the right, okay? Yeah. It's not even the right. It's off the tracks. Crazy. I mean, the well, things that, so that, they, that they both say are just so nuts. Well, I mean, look, who would have thought that Giuliani, who, let's face it, did have a good, a fairly good reputation, although I never America's liked I, I never, I that. never liked him, but he came off of the whole 9-11 thing. Uh, as as a as a way of actually promoting himself, among other things, and making himself as they called him America's mayor. Right. Nobody's going to call him that these days. Not even Republicans aren't going to call him that because he's become such an asswipe, you know, that that uh, they can't believe it. Yes, Kevin, you look like you want to say something. No, just adjusting. That's all right. Oh, oh, just adjusting. <laughs> Me too. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, 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 Rob. So I want to change the subject for the last couple of minutes because yeah. I think we've talked enough about Trump. The only yeah. news story that I've been paying attention to yeah. has, it is, has to do with sports. And it's oh, the, I know it's, what you're going to. And, and it's what's gone on in baseball and, and, what, and, and it's a social commentary as well because now they found that the uh, Houston Astros have been cheating. They cheated in 2017 and – we don't know, uh, you know. We know that they've there's been job losses, and that they've mentioned people by name. They're saying now that they're it, they're now. Uh, so they won the World Series in 2017. In 2018, the Red Sox won the World Series, and Alex Cora, who was the manager in 2018, was the bench coach for Houston in 2017. And now they're they're uh, investigating the 2018 thing. Now what they're saying uh, is the what? Wait a minute, what they're Alex what they're to the Mets. 
now it because uh, yeah because Carlos Beltran is was just hired as the Mets manager. Well, what what they put the uniform on once and he's probably going to be fired. What they're saying is is they were using television cameras to see what the signals were that they were right. giving the pitchers and so on right. and so forth. And then they were banging they were banging on garbage pails and giving signs to the batter to to say what pitches were coming. And the other thing that they're claiming so uh, Jose Altuve when he hit that. He hit a walk-off home run mm -hmm. in, I think it was Game 7 of the ALCS in 2017. Yeah. He he was screaming, and you can watch the video. He was screaming to his teammates who were waiting for him at home plate, don't rip off my shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think he was wearing a wire, and in that, that oh. wire had some sort of vibration thing going on. Oh. And so he didn't want them to rip off his shirt. When asked about it in the press conference, he giggled. First he said, what? to give himself a moment to think. But then he said the reason why he didn't want them to rip off his shirt is because his wife got mad at him the last time they did it. Really? You just hit a walk-off home run. You won the friggin' Who game. Who get to the World Series, and you're thinking about what your wife said? Yeah. You're fucking cheaters. Once you're a cheater, you're always a cheater. Now, the social piece of this. Yeah. I have been listening to sports radio, both the MLB network yeah. and the radio network and any local sports show and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there are people who don't care. So we are in a society where people think if you people think it's OK to cheat. <laughs> don't. Why did you fire Alex Cora? Why did you fire A.J.? Uh, what's his name? The manager of the of the Astros. And it that is what really more than the baseball piece of this. Yeah. If you ain't cheating, you're not trying. Is that is the, is the attitude? It's okay. It's it's no. it's. It, Can't it, think they blame about the it. Russians. Think about it. You got you've got uh, the the people that cheated to get their kids in school. Yeah. Yep. Right. You got you got the baseball. This is the biggest baseball scandal since the Black Sox scam yeah. scandal. Yeah. And 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 it, it it's the it's a sad. It's the thing. social mindset of people today. It is horrible. We, if you that's can get why, away with it, go for it. That's why I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm negative, and I think that there's no hope for this world. We're, we're going. We're slowly. Our society is sick, and I'm only getting sicker. Are they going to allow betting uh, on baseball games now? Is, is that what they were talking about? Betting on baseball and, and, and professional football. Uh, was there that is that, that that you hear the commercials all the time for those legal yeah. gambling sites. Well, it's probably coming. No, but in the, in the U.S. teams into Vegas, yeah, why it's not? In the US. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's coming on. because they're starting to let the teams into Vegas. You got the Raiders going to Vegas. You've got a hockey team that's going to Vegas. I'm sure there's a baseball team heading that way. It's got to be coming. It's 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 uh and and our leader is the top of that right because he lies and it's okay. Oh yeah, he'll probably bring it in if he gets four years. He'll probably fake, make it happen. It's okay. just it's acceptable now. We we just we've lost our moral compass in this country. People mm. don't care. The ends don't justify the means, but they don't care. I wish you had brought this up earlier. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, well, I, yeah. I was looking for a place to do it, but yeah, uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, you know, I mean, uh, I, you know. It's it's a it's a whole question of the morality in this country. And what do we do to win? Yeah. You know what is what do we do to win? You know the only thing when you is when you mention them banging on uh, on garbage uh, cans on garbage yeah. cans. There was a big scandal in England years ago about somebody ripping off Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and they did it in a similar fashion because they had a way of being able to give the answers or something to the person on stage because oh, the guy... Number three? No, no, no. The guy <laughs> would cough. Yeah, cough, yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. And so I, when you when you mentioned the cans, all I could think of was the uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire scandal. Uh, yeah, well, you know. Sad, sad world. Right. I cheat at, playing, at doing my crossword puzzle every now and then by going to Google. So, you know, when I'm 63 and not 23, let's yeah. put it that way. Hey, listen, this has been a really nice show. I've enjoyed this this evening. And so is Trumpy Bears lying face down on the floor over here. Uh, you worked him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, 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 Jeff. You've been very quiet tonight, but uh, what the hell? We love having you there. Uh, and uh, 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 Charlie, you've been kind of quiet too, although you've had a few words in here. Uh, Kevin's been quiet. Uh, I've been quiet. Nobody's talked for the last couple of hours. 
Uh, Rob? I've been banging garbage cans. In there. And, I and talked a, a lot. I made up for a lot of loss. Phil time. joined us late on in life here. And thanks also to Tom Yamaguchi for having joined us tonight. Hey, listen, why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a wig wave, a wig wave of I love, I love, love back at you and, and hope that you come back again maybe on Friday when I'm back again. I will not be here tomorrow night, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because uh, we're, uh, we're going to be at uh, doing the court thing, okay? And i got to get there early in the morning and... Uh, be ready for it, and uh, so I, I'm just going to go and take the night off tomorrow night. Then we'll be back on Friday night. I think I can do it Friday night. Uh, in the meantime, uh, next up, Jack Bishop with the uh, the Intersection. Great show, and he'll be uh, followed by absolutely nobody until uh, he comes back again tomorrow night <laughs> at, uh, at midnight, and then I'll be back again, as I say, on Friday. In the meantime, as always, if, uh, you know, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.